it's December 2022 and I am continuing on with my series best of I've already done foundation which I'll put right up here in these videos I talk about everything I bought actually and at the end I'll tell you what I think the best of is I pulled out most but not everything it's a little messy I have to admit and I am shocked I counted this up but I typed it up and I forgot to print it, so I just have my handwritten notes. I think it was like 27 palettes or eyeshadow products that I got this year. So let's uh, waste no time at all. I'm not going to do these in order of the year, but I am going to say I want to thank Dior very, very much for keeping us entertained and putting out some really nice products. So let's go into what I got from Dior. Two of my favorite Dior's came out at the beginning of last year, and that is Popeline and Organza. And I think it's Poplin, but it means Poplin, just in French. That actually would have kind of worked today, although I'm loving the eye look I got today. These are beautiful, beautiful palettes. One is kind of pinky, and this is, I think, the Organza and one is a little bit on the warmer side. People were crazy for this one. I think most people prefer warmer, but I loved this one, you guys. I wore this a lot. It stayed right here, as did this. And I might just pick up one or two colors to put all over the lid when I'm in a hurry. These are beautiful formulas. Their formulas used to be pretty poor, I have to say, but a few years ago, when they redid all their colors, they came out with a different formula that is so, so great for hooded lids. It's also not, there's nothing difficult, like something you have to blend for a long, long time. I very much enjoy the Dior eyeshadows. They came out with a couple of velvets, blue velvet and this one, which I cannot pronounce. Rose Multipus? Multi... something like that. Rose is in the word. Look for rose and velvet. And this is one of the best blue eye looks I have ever gotten. I love blue, but I find eyeshadow-wise they're very difficult for me. This worked for me. I could actually throw away, but I won't, all my blue palettes and just stick with this one. That's how much I love this one. And of course you know I love this one because I do like those pinky, mauvey tones. They they excite me. Both beautiful, beautiful palettes. This is Miss Dior, which just came out recently, and this is Dior Riviera, which came out in the summertime, and I did use this a lot. If I'm not doing anything, if I'm not shooting a video, very often I want a simple eye, an easy eye, not something too colorful. Sometimes, I mean, in the spring and summer, sometimes I do a little bit more, but this is one that I went to quite a bit. Unfortunately, I believe this was a limited edition. I will link everything I can find down below. And this also I just, I loved. I have nothing to say that is bad about these Dior's. So the backstage, I got two, khaki, which is in the other room, and this one, which is coral. And you know what, you guys? I don't love a warm eyeshadow palette, but I love this. This is how I like to do a warm eyeshadow palette. And I feel that there's several ways you can go with this. You know, you can bring in more of this color. By the way, all these palettes I have reviews on. I should do an eyeshadow palette. Um playlist I should but just take a look in my channel if you want to see reviews but I think I said because I just said it now this kind of reminds me of a peach and you know how by the pit it can get a little bit more pinky that's this color it really is cut a peach in half and this is what you have going on and I really enjoy this spring and summer not so much in winter beautiful the khaki one, I have to say, I was a little surprised. It's hard to tell until you swatch something outside so you get the light, how much they had in the shiny arena there. And not enough mattes for me. It's a lovely palette, but I feel like it's a more dramatic look because a lot of them, I think, seem to be a little shiny. This doesn't have that problem. 
I love this palette. Chantecaille Giraffe. This is another one when this first came out, I was wearing it all the time. I very much love this palette. I very much love this and this and these browns are lovely. Look how pretty that is. Truly, I wore this for months and months and really the only damage to it is probably my fingernails right here. It's uh, beautiful. I love it. Sydney Grace Be Mine. So this is an independent brand you can only buy on their website to my knowledge and sometimes it's hard to tell what the colors are. When I got it I was a little bit surprised and it became very simple to me. This is a warm row and this is a coovy, cold, <laughs> mauvey, pinky kind of row and then here are your extra shimmer glimmers whatever. And I, I didn't really love it. It's my first experience with a palette from this company and I, I wasn't sure. I think I, I felt like I have these colors. I have these colors. There's nothing here that I don't have. But today I tried something different. I decided I wanted to give this a go and I thought I would do this entire row. Changed my mind because this is much more shiny than I thought it might be. But I'm doing like this, 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 and this, and a little bit of this. And you know what? It's super, super pretty. So you have to be a little bit more creative when right in front of you is a palette that looks like meh. You're going to have to play around with it because it isn't a matter of the palette inspiring you in this case. It's a matter of your inner artist finding what works if you have an inner artist. So this is Be Mine from Sydney Grace. So the year before last, Hindash came out with his monochrome palette and it was a little warm for me. It was hard. I love Hindash. I think he's a beautiful makeup artist, a beautiful man, so handsome, so it just seems like he has a, a good heart. He doesn't post as often as he used to, probably because he's running this business, but he came out with his second edition, which he's calling Monochromance. And it looks like this, and it's much more suitable for me and my coloring and my aesthetic, my preferences. You can use these for blush, you can use these for contour, you can use them for bronzer. These, it, the idea is powders are powders, and each shade is ombre. I did one look, and then I did two other looks that I never published. I think I, I might have put them on Instagram, but I didn't do the videos for them. I love this palette. I don't use it very often because I have a lot of palettes, but I do love this palette. Natasha Denona Pastel. So, no. <laughs> Biba, where's my pastel? Um, okay, I have it. I was on the floor collecting things. I keep things in little boxes. It's not like a big drawer system, and it takes a while to find things, and you must know if you've been here before, I'm blind. I do have the pastel palette. I just didn't pull out the right palette. I happen to love this palette. I love pastels. I think they can be so much fun, but I will say one of the shades was a problem for me. It hard panned, and that was quite a shame. And for me also, palettes like this, they're not going to be everyday palettes. Those are going to be for something fun, for something once in a while, which I'm okay with, but I think a lot of people not. And I oftentimes find that Natasha Denona changes her formulas a lot, and sometimes you run into, I really dislike her cream to powder formulas. They are horrible on crepey eyelids or loose eyelids. I wish she, you know, she's not a spring chicken herself. She must know that they're difficult to work with. So love the palette, lots of fun, not for every day, and one of the shades hard panned. It's not gonna make my top list, but I do love it. It does make me happy. All right, this one I returned, and I'm not even sure, it's a little confusing what it was called, but it's Rive de Chanel, and it was, it was reminded me of the Tisse, where it was kind of flat instead of rounded, and it was extraordinarily sheer in a peach tone. I think I read that this was really for the Asian market, for the Japanese market, and that's the way they like to wear their makeup, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's just that 
I can just put blush on my eyes and get the same look. So that one went back. Not my, it, it just, it was pretty. It just, you know. Here's another one I sent back, and I could have the name wrong, the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk Dream Palette. She came out with several things, and this is what I saw on my <laughs> on my main page. Uh, it was, you know, it was a Charlotte Pillbury, Charlotte Pillbury, kind of. I mean, why don't we just call it the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk line? Look, if you find something that works that people buy, I get it, you lean in, but... Everybody has pink eyeshadow palettes right now, and they are offering you more than four colors, and they're better textures for me. She has a little too much shine for me because I'm hooded. I've said it before about her quads. A lot of them look very beautiful, but in their application, once they're on my eyes, they just don't work for me, and this one was no exception, so that went back. Tom Ford. Sous le sable. It's fine. I just have to say, I don't understand the hoopla about Tom Ford. Oftentimes I look at the palettes, you know, one after another after another. They kind of all look the same. I get it. It's just a quad. You can't do a lot with a quad. I understand it. But I have to say, oftentimes when I do a look, I look in the mirror and I think, okay, whatever. When I look at my thumbnails, I think, wow, the, it looks really, really pretty. You're not going to get a Denona look or a Pat McGrath look out of a quad. You're not going to get wow or pow, but you always get a very pretty look. And I think more and more for me, as much as I love to play with makeup and be creative with makeup, looking pretty is getting a little bit higher up there for me. And their quads do it. The quads do it. I don't know what's going on with the future of this brand. I know they were just bought by oh, Estee Lauder, which could be problematic. It seems like once you get bought by Estee Lauder, <laughs> it goes downhill from there. We'll see what happens. I do like it. This one went back. The Patrick Ta Major Dimensions 2 palette in rose. It looked rose in the pans. When I put it on, it was warm. It was almost as if he and Charlotte Tilbury are using the same lab where you open something up and then you put it on your face. Wow! It's the powders. It's Charlotte Tilbury's blushes look pink in the pan, look warm, rusty on me. This palette did the same thing. And actually, I don't remember because I didn't watch the video, I have a feeling it's possible that that Pillow Talk palette, say that five times, from Charlotte Tilbury that I returned might have pulled warm on me. I bet it did. I bet it did. So that was a no. Artist Couture's Supreme Mauve. It's a very pretty palette. It's different than the Sydney Grace in that I felt that every row had a different story. I do feel every row has a different story, but the undertones are pretty much the same. This shade is definitely warm. I would say this is cool. This might be more neutral. So this is very much a mauve kind of cool palette. And it's lovely. The shadows are quite nice. And it's a lovely palette. I mean, I kept it. You can see I do return things that don't float my boat. And I did keep this one. So that should say something. Anastasia. I think it's called Nouvelle. 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 <sighs> Words. Uh, so the idea behind this is it's pretty khaki, pretty green, and then you have a pop of lavender, which I happen to love lavender with green. I think they are great partners. There's some warm tones in there for people who don't like the cools. So there's several ways to go with this. It's lovely. And it's interesting because there's so many ways to go. You could just do this color and this color because these aren't really full out greens like this and this. But this, like, celery kind of, I don't know. I need to spend more time with this one. Just like today I did the Be Mine, because I never use it. I think I should take out three palettes and put them out and use them. As far as blendability, as far as formula, I didn't have any issues with that, with this palette. Another Chantecaille, this one is Cougar. 
and I did hold it up to the giraffe when I did the review. I'll put my review right here for you. I love this and again the giraffe I had right here on this table and I used it all the time when I first got it and when I got this one this was right here on the table. This one has the gray and I'm just I mentioned this before I love the idea of finding a fantastic gray for me that isn't too cold. Some grays are just deadening. I can tell they're very very icy and I can't really explain but I see them a lot. This isn't that. It's such a great neutral everyday palette for me. This gray can, this gray can get a little bit too dark depending on how I use it, but I just mix it with this. Pick up a little of this, pick up a little of this, and it's a lighter gray. Beautiful palette. Who's a cougar most? Me. Hi Gracie, why don't you go take a nappy nap? Yeah. Yeah. All right, the Chanel 58 Le Ombre. I cannot find it. I don't remember what it looks like. I collected all these notes this morning, but I think I have 27 palettes and I've forgotten a couple already. I think this is the one that is a cool color, kind of mauve, but it has a gold on it. And I think I got it in the last couple of months and I really loved it. I do still have it. It's just this is, I really have to clean out this space. It's a nightmare and I keep everything in little boxes. So I try to keep all the groups together. Eyeshadows and I might have three different brands and the Chanel is all in one place and I have a feeling I reorganized because I, I, I just, I can't find anything you guys. If it's the one I think it is, I love it. I still have it. I cannot find it. This is one of the Tweed palettes. I got two. This is Couvre. I'm not sure I'm pronouncing it correctly, but I think this is my favorite one. I think I did kind of a holiday look for this, and I thought, yes, this actually would work with the shirt. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's a more sophisticated way to do a holiday. This gold right here is so pretty and sparkly and special. Love this one. So this was a fabulous palette and I do love it. And uh, if I had a life, I'd be wearing it. Here's my other tweed sleeve, Grun et Rose. And this one is a little bit cooler to the warmth of the first one that I showed you, except this one I think is great for every day because this shade, you might say this is the special shade, like the gold was a special shade. It's not as sparkly as evening to me and I wore this a lot. It's a cool tone palette without being too deadening. This is such a, the razor's edge finding the right kind of cools. This is a beautiful cool and a beautiful palette. The Natasha Denona Retro Palette, which a lot of people couldn't get on board with this. I thought I put together a very pretty look. I did a couple of looks with this one and I just think it's special and it's worth having and it's worth playing with and this is the kind of palette that inspires, you know? What if I dip a little bit of this in with a little bit of this? Playing, mixing and matching. I think I've tried all the shades. I don't think I've had any issues with the shades, which oftentimes I do in a Denona that cream to powder formula makes me a little crazy. I'm sure they have it here, but I, I didn't have a problem with it to my recollection. Beautiful palette. The Natasha Denona My Dream Palette palette is not my dream. It's not my nightmare, but if you watch my video, I will post it right here. I said I thought that she was taking colors out of several of her previous palettes, but they're all palettes I have so I didn't feel the need for it. It's lovely and there's different color stories, different ways you can go with this. Evening, day, warm, cool, it kind of has it all, which is why it's my dream palette. It's just, I already have it. And yeah, lovely palette, I got it. These we have to talk about, you guys. This is the new pod set from Westman Atelier. Right now, it's in a gift 
set with mascara, which I'm insane for. The eyeliner, which doesn't stay in the waterline, so that's something you just want to do some lining up here with. And this. And this is a beautiful, beautiful set. I think that she changed her formula because with the other ones, you really have to dig in with that brush to pick anything up. And with these, I didn't have to do that. So the pickup is much better in her previous. And I have to say, it's my favorite color story too. And it's right here on my table for just dipping in and putting on this color. Let me see if I can find it. This color, all over my lid, a one and done. Is that the color? You think it is? It's really dark in here. Yeah, that's the color. I have put on several times, just a little bit of a one and done, a nice little minky taupe. Love it. Beautiful palette. Well, not palette. Beautiful set of pods. And hopefully she will come out with these not in the gift set really soon. I can't imagine how she wouldn't unless she had a, a small run on them. Then maybe not. So you might want to get the gift set for yourself. <laughs> These little eye soots from Ritual Defee are so much fun. I wore the gold one all over my eye the other day. I've worn this one, Serpent, yeah, Serpent de Mer, several times. I will say if you are hooded, it's going to crease, but I don't mind that. I think it's part of the charm, part of the look. I think these are just fabulous. I adore them. So that I just got recently. And the Florist's palette, which I think I put away. And that one I loved on my eyes. At the end of the day, you know, when I'm doing my screenshots and I'm putting together my thumbnail, I was thinking, you know what? This actually works on my face too. It's just that orangey, rusty color. I don't like that on my face. So I naturally are like, no. But it photographed beautifully. I loved the way the powders worked on my eyes. They required just about no blending. Beautiful, beautiful powders and the colors actually work for a nice daily look on my eyes. So let's talk about Tom Ford. I have three things and I'm a little confused. Why should, why should, why should any day be different? So Sula Sabla, I already showed you that, right? And then we have Insolent Rose and Violet Satine. Or is it Violet? I mean, Tom Ford, he's not French, you know what I mean? So this is Insolent Rose. Again, we have a nice little cool story. We've seen them before, but it's a lovely palette. There's a little variety in here too. You know, you could just do these two, bring in something for darkening. The palettes are always well imagined and this is so, so pretty. Beautiful palette. And then this one is the cream formula, I believe. Yes. You know, this is an example of a purple palette that has more of that blue base or grayish base. I think these might actually work together. They're both kind of in the purple zone, but this one is cooler has more of that blue color, more of that gray color, and this one is more of a pinker thing. I mean, it's more of mauve, but mauve is related to purple. Purples are funny colors, right? You guys, it's a couple of days later. I am editing right now, and it, it's super hard to edit when I'm that spacey, but I'm, I'm managing, I hope. Anyway, there were a couple of things that I forgot, and I noticed that when I was cleaning the other day, and I thought, let me just edit and see if there's anything else I left out. And there are two things, and they're actually really important because they're, they're very key for me. We have the Jones Road eyeshadow in the color Ash, and this, hello, wow, that really goes. This is what I'm talking about. When I'm talking about I want a gray shade to kind of do some shading on my eyes that isn't too cold. And there it is. And this works so, so well for me. Or if I'm not using it for right up here, what people call the transition shade, all over the lid. And it's a beautiful formula as well. So this, I got this year, and most definitely one of my favorites. It's something that needs to be on my table all the time, and it kind of is, which is how it didn't get included, I think. 
And another thing that is always on my table that I've worn so much since I bought it is the Sicily. This is so beautiful. It's a beautiful formula, but it's a beautiful color as well. And I find these are nothing new, you know what I mean? They're around all over the place, but when they are released, they're always the same color. There's a ballet pink, there's a champagne, there's a, a copper, and I have them, I've done them, I'm bored with that. This color, I do not see all the time. The light in here, you know, there's no sun at all, so the light's a little different than usual, but it's called bronze, but it's like a warmer, uh, it's not too warm, it's not too cold, it's quite neutral, and when I need to, let's hold it up over here and I'll zoom in so I'm not as close to the light. When I need to just go, but I want to look put together, this is what I use. I use this so, so much. And I also wanted to show you the Insolent Rose again in action. This is what I'm wearing today and it's lovely. So I actually put on all my makeup today just to do this insert. I mean, eventually I was going to have to put some on to run some errands, but uh, my own incompetence got me here sooner than I thought I would. And now we're going to go on to me hemming and hawing about what is the best. But these two were not included in that question, and they absolutely must be. You know what would be fantastic is if Sicily made a color like this. It wouldn't be used in the same way as I use this as a powder, but I, I just used it the other day for another look where I was doing, for my perfume video, and I just wanted to have a little sparkly on my lid, and I used something else that I didn't mention. I love this Boy Tears from Hindash. It is gorgeous. First of all, the name is adorable, but it's just a gorgeous it's a liquid, but it doesn't have an oiliness to it. It's a beautiful, beautiful texture, and it's a beautiful product just to add on to whatever you have or to wear alone on your lids. And after I put this on, I felt, oh, I need I need to give myself some shadow right there so I don't just look like a hood, and I went in with the Jones Road. So yeah, this list of things that I bought this year and what I think of them is definitely <laughs> incomplete, but I, darn, I did my best, and now let's get into the rest. And you guys, I think that's it. I think I got everything that I got. I Now I have to mention the Patrick Ta palette, Major Dimensions number one. I had bought that when it first came out. I really loved the looks I put together, not for the video, it was a day like this where it was really dark and the look was not fantastic, but I wore that for another video and I kept on thinking about it. That's how you know something is good. You keep on thinking, God, that was a good look. But I returned it because all the shimmers on the top row, I'm not going to use them. And I thought, that's a lot of money for a smaller palette when you compare it to Denona, for instance. Smaller choices and almost half of it I'm not going to use. And then at the last sale, I repurchased it because I kept on thinking about it and it arrived broken. When I went to return it to get one in store, they didn't have any in stock. And then this year I got it on sale and it wasn't broken and I'm so delighted that I have it. I have to say, it's not new, but it may be my favorite palette because it's not too dark, it's not too warm, it's not too cool but I can get a coolish kind of look out of it and a warmish kind of look out of it. And it's a very good daily palette. You can get a smoky brown eye for evening out of it. It's solid, you guys. It kind of checks all the boxes for me. Yes, you don't look at it and fireworks are going off. It's not exciting, but like I said, I'm you know, when you don't want to be artsy, you know, you just want to be pretty, that's the palette to go to. Okay, let's talk about what else I really, really love. That's the problem. I think you're going to be bored with my answers because it's not always about having fun. It's about 
getting out soon, knowing that I can depend on something. Both of the Chantecai palettes work for me. This one, the Cougar, also the Giraffe, I love them. I love this. I love what I have, the look that I have on my eyes right now, but that's not like a daily look. I love it. most everything Dior did and most everything Chanel did. So you guys, this video is not really about the best of the year because I cannot say this palette's the best of the year. So I really don't know how to do this. What can I say? I've shown you all the palettes that I have and I put pictures of the ones that I don't have. I really don't think there's much duddy in the group. There are things that are a little not exciting a little disappointing or I kind of haven't paid attention to and I've already noted those. So we know that. I think when you look at the Chanel's, it's a matter of what color story works for you because I don't think Chanel had anything that didn't work this year. I mean, the Reef de Chanel I didn't love, but I sent that back. So then the Tom Ford's, it's a matter again of color story. What color story is working for you? and a matter of the Dior's. The Dior's kind of had it all. And again, it's just, I feel, I feel bad about this because with foundations, I can say, this is the foundation I always go to. But for eyeshadows, it's always about, what do I feel like? Which is totally subjective. It's, it's about color. And I need to get out the door, what am I gonna go to? And for those, the Patrick Ta, the Giraffe, the Cougar, this new Westman Atelier, those are the ones that are good for every day. So I think if you're looking for an everyday kind of palette, those are four good palettes to go to. If you're looking for a palette to have fun with, ah, let's see, from what I tried this year, I don't know, I think I really, I enjoy the look that I got today. Maybe it's that Sydney Grace palette. Maybe it's the Supremes palette. Maybe it's the Retro palette. I think that's more personal because it's about what colors excite you and interest you. If you're looking for a solid spring summer palette, the Dior Backstage, I love the look I got. I love the formula. It's fabulous for a warm palette that is not rusty warm. It's more like peachy warm and they have that little cool color in there, that kind of inside of the peach color. That is a solid, solid palette. So that one, yeah, but I'm not gonna be doing best of the year. I feel like I failed a little bit because this is much, much harder than picking a favorite foundation, which is hard enough as it is. But that is going to wrap up today's video. Thank you so much for spending some time with me. I hope you enjoyed a glass of wine while you were doing so. I hope it was helpful to you and I hope you come back again. Until we meet again, be safe and be smart, and I'm wishing you good health.